So today, I'm on a mission to debunk the myth that the best street food only exists in the major cities. So join me to see if I can find some amazing street food in the heart of Reading at Blue Collar Corner. What food wonders lie between these bustling streets? We are Reading the unsung star of Royal Berkshire, home to none other than Kate Winslet, the Oscar winner and Queen of Titanic herself. But did you know it's also the stomping ground of funny man Ricky Gervais? That's right, before he was skewering Hollywood legends at the Golden Glows, he was likely chomping down on fish and chips right here in Reading. So if you thought this town was just a handy stop off on the train route between London and Bristol, well think again, this town is steeped in history with a dash of rock and roll. Reading was actually established in the 8th century. You heard that right, the 8th century. It was once a thriving medieval hub, with Reading Abbey hosting the likes of King Henry I. Now let's not mistake this old world charm for a lack of modern thrills. Reading sure knows how to shake off the dust and amp up the volume, especially when it comes to the annual Reading Festival. Now I don't want to brag, but I do a little bit, but even yours truly has spent a night or two in Reading Festival's mosh pit, watching Rage Against the Machine at Queen's of the Stone Age on stage, which was hands down one of the best nights of live music I've had the pleasure to experience. So trust me when I say in Reading, the excitement is as tasty as the street food we're about to devour. If you saw my last video on how to decode a restaurant's menu to help you discover the best and avoid the worst places to eat, then you'll be familiar with my menu detective concept. Well this week, I thought I'd put this concept into the real world and see how it helps me on my visit to Blue Collar Corner to see if it can help me discover the best food it has to offer. If you've no idea what I'm talking about, then I'll link to the video at the end of this one, so feel free to check it out then. As you know, I'm a huge fan of the quality, variety and skill of food businesses in this area, so I'll hopefully be debunking the myth that the best street food is only found in the major cities. Reading, you better not let me down, but as Sherlock himself once said, it's a capital mistake to theorise before one has data. So come on, grab your deer stalker, magnifying glass and join me as I sift through the delicious evidence. The game is afoot, but first things first, let's get a beer. At Blue Collar, they have a great relationship with one of my very favourite local craft brewers, Double Barreled. Double Barreled is a modern, independent brewery based in Reading. Only a stone's throw from Blue Collar, they specialise in small batch beers, brewed and packaged by a passionate team with an unwavering dedication to quality and love of great beer. So I'm going to try from one of their eight draft lines, perhaps even more if I can. I was actually recommended to start with their lager, which is brewed exclusively for Blue Collar. A crisp, clean and refreshing lager beer, perfect for pairing with the finest street food in the ding. So with beer literally in hand, I walked past a welcoming smell for well nice food. I simply had to stop and use my newfound investigation skills on this simple yet focused menu. Now if you've seen my last video, you'll know that I think this is a very good thing. Probably even more so with street food where staff and space is more limited. You can tell the menu has clearly been well thought through to be inclusive. So they provide an option for everyone, whether you're meat eater, gluten free, veggie or vegan. That's really smart and creative in such a short menu. I had to chat to Helena to get the lowdown on her business and menu. She suggested I go for a best of three combo, and who am I to disagree? So it's the fish, halloumi sticks, frickles and chips for me. Now for me the star of the show is easy. It's the freshly fried pollock, and I cannot emphasise enough how incredibly fresh this fish was. You know that moment when you take a bite and it just melts in your mouth? Well that's exactly what happened here. The fish was succulent, tender and bursting with flavour. But in my experience, what can sometimes sink even the best ingredients is the quality of the oil being used. But thankfully here, there was no need to worry. It's clear Helen knows this, and the fish and chips were not greasy in the slightest. Biting into the batter was crisp, light with no trace of greasiness, that pleasing crunch that gives way to softness beneath. Inside the delicate shell was a pollock, moist, flaky and full of flavour. A pleasant surprise that is both familiar and delightful. And the same had to be said about the halloumi, it's so good. Now here's a little confession. I'm not the biggest fan of gherkins, but with Helena's frickles with bang bang sauce, they were a complete revelation. These deep fried pickled gherkins were crispy, tangy and had just the right amount of zing. Paired with a bang bang sauce, which had a lovely kick of spice, it really was a match made in street food heaven. It just goes to show that trying something new can lead to the delightful surprises. Now where things got even more interesting was the homemade tartar sauce. Oh my oh my, it was amazing, one of the best I'd had in ages. Just imagine this, a creamy base, perfectly balanced with tangy gherkins, capers, zesty lemon and just a hint of fresh herbs. And best of all, there was loads of it. I just couldn't resist dipping every single item on my plate into it. Now let's talk about the mushy peas. You know they say you either love them or hate them, and unfortunately I have to admit I'm in the latter camp. I gave them a fair shot, but the texture and flavour just does nothing for me. You can't really lay this at the doorstep of well nice food, as based on their tartar sauce, I'm sure the mushy peas are delicious. If you like that sort of thing though, unfortunately it's just not for me. However, that really didn't take away anything at all from the overall incredible experience of well nice food. If you like what you've seen and heard so far about street food in Reading, it would be amazing if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. The more support and traction these videos get, the more content I can create. So come on, grab a fork and get involved. My second beer from Double Barreled was the Parker, which is an American pale ale, one of my favourites. It's a year-round pale ale and it's light, refreshing and hazy. 
Gentle bitterness from the cascade of centennial hops on the hot side meet bright, juicy citrus fruit notes from the citra on the dry hop, all wrapped up with a soft mouthfeel with hints of stone fruit from their house yeast. It's so good. Now who out there has come across Korean hot dogs? Not me. It's a completely new and intriguing form of street food, and I'm super excited to try it. So what are they exactly? Well, a Korean hot dog, also known as a ganja dog, is a trendy street food delight that's been making waves globally, and with good reason. It's a fantastic fusion between American and Korean street food influences. Its roots trace back to the 2010s in South Korea. Unlike its American counterpart, a sausage coated in cornmeal batter and deep fried, the Korean corn dog takes things up a notch. The sausage, or even the block of mozzarella for a vegetarian twist, is skewered and dipped in batter and hopefully fried to perfection. I've heard so much about these Korean dogs and seen their popularity explode on social media. So the idea of biting into a perfectly fried crispy exterior, followed by a burst of juicy sausage or molten cheese is just too enticing to resist. It's a unique blend of flavors and textures that I'm sure will make an impression. So yes, you could say I'm buzzing to try this street food sensation at Fry's Love. But before I do, it's wing time. And if you've seen this channel before, I love chicken wings. So first off, I'm gonna be diving into their bonus Korean wings. These wings are a flavor tour de force marrying just the right hint of sweetness with a kick of spice and a tangy edge and an umami depth. I absolutely love this cut of chicken as they've gone for the thigh. Next is the buffalo wing. These wings are dressed with a mouth-watering sauce and garnished with chili peppers. The heat and tanginess of the wings will definitely give your taste buds a kick up the ass. It's a fiery flavor adventure that you won't want to miss, but for my money, the bonus Korean wings win the battle. Now get ready for a twist that will blow your mind, the crunchy bite, which is the Korean pork corn dog. Let me tell you, I've seen these corn dogs all over Fry's Love Instagram, and I was dying to try them. But here's the thing, they're not what I expected. When I took my first bite, I was greeted with a delightful combination of textures. The crispy corn batter, the panko breadcrumbs, and that burst of flavor from the flaming Hot Cheetos coating. And to top it off, generous drizzles of mayo sauce added creaminess and tangy touch. It was a surprising yet delicious experience that showed me just how amazing a corn dog can be. And then the next one, their house special, slathered in barbecue and garlic sauce. It's a real treat for any of you barbecue or garlic lovers out there. The smoky tangy barbecue sauce combined with a bold punch of garlic elevates the humble corn dog to a whole new level of yumminess. But what was a surprise was how well the Parker IPA worked with the food from Fry's Love. This American pale ale with its light, refreshing and slightly hazy profile was an ace companion to the Korean street food. The gentle bitterness from Cascade and Centennial Hops in the beer provided a harmonious balance with the almami rich bonus chicken Korean wings, helping cut through the sweet and spicy sauce. And then the bright juicy citrus notes from the citra hops mirrored the tangy elements with the wings, creating a delightful echo of flavors. And then with the Korean corn dogs, the beer came into its own again. The lightness of the Parker IPA contrasted beautifully with the richness and deep fried sausage preventing the dish from becoming too heavy. Meanwhile, the fruity citrus notes enhanced the flavors of barbecue and garlic sauce, lifting them to new heights. Okay, let's break it down and see what we've uncovered in our culinary sleuthing here at Blue Color Corner. We set on this mission to answer one question. Can we find top-notch street food outside of the big smoke? London, Manchester or Liverpool? After today's investigation, the answer to that is not just a yes, but a hell yeah. And I have to say that with the gusto of someone who's just discovered the joy of a perfectly crispy Korean corn dog. Blue Collar Corner in Reading, as we've seen, is not just a place where food is cooked and served. It's a hive of innovation, creativity and great cooking rivaling and even surpassing many of the hotspots in the capital. And the secret sauce? It seems as always lies in the passion of the people behind the counters, like Helena from Well Nice Food or Jack from Fry's Love, who put heart and soul into every dish they serve. Between the wonderful fish and chips, the flavor-loaded wings, and the mind-blowing corn dogs, I think it's fair to say Reading has definitely made a mark on my street food map. And let's not forget the beers from Double Barrel, perfect liquid accompaniment to the feast. But what's the takeaway here? Well, Besides from a belly full of incredible eats, perhaps a little too full, it's the realization that best food experiences aren't always found in the glitzy, bustling metropolises. Sometimes they're tucked away in the corners of less well-trodden cities, just waiting for intrepid many detectives like us to unearth them. If you'd like to experience any more of the dining fable's street food adventures, then click on the playlist now. So let's raise a glass, or a corn dog, to the unsung heroes of the culinary world. Because if Blue Collar Corner is any indicator, there's a whole world of flavor out there just waiting to be discovered. And the beauty of it all, Blue Collar is going to be keeping us on our toes, regularly switching up their lineup of vendors. That's right, just when you think you've cracked the code, they shuffle the deck. The promise of new tantalizing flavors and exciting food adventures is enough to have me hopping back on the first train as soon as the next crew rolls into town. After all, a good menu detective never rests, as there's always a new culinary mystery to unravel.